Um, first off, we have a massive crowd today, so I wanted to thank everybody for listening in. Uh, my name is Ari Zuckerman, Vice President at Center Court Sports Academy. For all the new listeners, uh, our goal for the Center Court webinar series is to keep valuable information flowing to the international and to the local tennis community, and to keep all of you engaged with creative ideas throughout these tough times. We are certainly all in this together, and we want to, we will get through this together. Um, we've been having great topics the past couple of weeks. Today's topic is going to include uh, Dave Bailey's footwork methodology for player development. Um, me personally, I've been watching a ton of Dave's videos and feel that today's webinar uh, will be massively helpful towards everybody, um, basically everybody who's listening in. This, this will be huge for, for, uh, for you guys. Dave has incredibly smart and creative ways to practice footwork using simple objects, um, a jump rope, a ladder and dots, tennis wall with one tennis ball, basically any surface with a small amount of space to tennis racket. Um, our very special guest today is none other than uh, Mr. Dave Bailey himself. Um, joining us as well is my regular guest, a legendary coach, Conrad Singh, who is CEO and Director of Coaching and Head of Performance at Center Court Sports Academy, uh, which is also one of the largest performance academies in North America. Um, I'm going to throw it over to you, Conrad. Let's, uh, let's begin with um, how you value footwork in terms of, um, you know, running this, uh, this massive academy with all these kids and, uh, and what you believe is the value of uh, that, that footwork plays and, and Thank you, Ari, and uh, thank you to all our listeners listening in. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited. This, this is an area of tennis um, that is just absolutely huge. Um, I'm a massive believer in the fact that there are only two things you can control in tennis. One is your racket and the other is your feet. Um, I really believe that the footwork area, and we're seeing with Novak becoming – just an incredible athlete we've seen with Roger being where he is and, you know, he's a ballerina on a tennis court. The importance of that footwork is out of this world to those players. There are comments that have come from Agassi going back to him where he says, movement is my weapon. Um, Roger famously says, if I move well, I play great. So it is an area that is critical and we've worked really hard to get what I, who I believe is the world's leader in footwork specific for tennis, Mr. Dave Bailey from Sydney, Australia. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to have you, Dave. We've worked together a very long time. Yeah. Um, we've known each other going back probably a decade and a half. Um, it's been incredible to, to see how you've developed your methodology. Dave, could you just uh, firstly welcome on board and let us know a little bit about this uh, key area of fit, uh, footwork? Well, thanks. And yeah, it's great to see you again. Yeah, well, I have been, you know, in the tennis industry for 30 years, 30 years. And I was worked in fitness for quite a few, you know, for, for about 15 years. But I also realized how important it was to get on the court and just think about your footwork. Really think about, you know, how you move out to the ball, how you split step. And I came up with this concept of what I call a contact move, which is a move that you do when you hit the ball. And um, yeah, my job really is, is to get the people to come onto the court actually hitting tennis ball. That's where it's a little bit different. My method is very different because people come onto the court, they hit tennis balls the whole time. I have names, I have two words, but you know, what I call the five R's, you know, how to get ready, how to read, how to react, how to respond, how to recover on the court. And through processes that shadow tennis and self feed and feeding the ball into them, um, I find, you know, this is, this is it's, it really isn't fitness. It, it's, it's, it's that connection between, you know, getting on the court and hitting tennis balls and thinking about your footwork. So to me, it's the most specific way that you can work on your footwork. Absolutely awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you, I think it's really important that we, what's your opinion? I mean, fitness is one area. It's a huge area. Physical development, I think fitness falls into that category. Strength and conditioning is also a part of, physical development, but footwork, I believe, really has its own area. How do you distinguish between those various areas under the umbrella of physical conditioning and development? Well, I, I think, you know, with the footwork, you've got to realize that you can do all this skipping, which is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. You can do ladder drills. You can, you can weave out of tones, which is all fantastic to work on your athleticism, your agility, your speed, your power, whatever. But in the end, you have to be able to, well, 
another huge part of footwork, which people don't even talk about, is reading. You have to read the ball. And then there's all these different balls coming over the net. And you can be doing all this fitness, whatever, but if you don't recognize the ball and make a smart decision on what I call the contact move, the move that you make when you contact the ball, if you don't understand how to move for that ball, that specific ball, and hit it back in the correct way, then to me, that's what's really important about going out and practicing your footwork like that. So it's, 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 my method is kind of in between the physical side and the coaching side. People see me walk onto the court, I've got a basket of tennis balls. They think I'm going to do a, a, you know, a tennis lesson. But what I'm really doing is a footwork lesson. So, you know, the movement is so important that you actually, when you do the footwork, that's why I'm such a huge fan of shadow tennis, that they're doing the movements that they're going to do when they get out onto the court. So, Dave, um, let's get straight into it. We're in a difficult moment right now. We're all aware of the, you know, what's going on in the world. The tennis community is devastated by the fact, you know, that we can't get on court. Um, the thing I love about the Bailey method, and I've been using it for many, many years in our academy and developing pro players down to beginners, um, is the fact that you don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need a tennis court. Could mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that in today's current situation? Well, I mean, exactly. And, and I think, you know, what I'm going to go through in a minute, I'm going to do a presentation. And I'm going to go through, I think, some of the simplest footwork that you can do. But I've tried to do this presentation more about exactly what everyone's limitations are at the moment. We're all either, you know, limited to, you know, a driveway or we're limited to our, you know, inside. So I've tried to put some ideas down today where the kids can learn some stuff that they can do at home. That they can do in very tight spaces. Um, but still feel as though it's very specific to tennis. And I think, you know, these contact moves that I'm going to introduce to you, to you today, I'm not going to show players hitting the ball. It's not going to be, you know, a, a, a talk today about, okay, this is the move you do here and here. It's just to give them some different, uh, learn what I call learn the look of the different moves that they can do and some drills that they can do, either it's shadow tennis, uh, skipping, uh, using bladders, you know, even doing it around the house or up and down the driveway. So I've really tried to think today about the presentation about how they can do this at home and, you know, but still be doing things that are very, very specific to tennis. Well, Dave, um, with, without any further ado, I mean, we've got kids who are in our program. We've got people from all over the world have been reaching out to us. We've got parents and, of course, we've got some coaches who are watching. Um, take it away. We'd love to see your presentation. Okay. Thank you. So I wanted to start off and sort of say, well, tennis is a lower body sport. So I just wanted everyone that is watching this just to have a look at some of the different ways that you use your hips when you play. Um, and I'm going to go through some of the athletic skills because I think this is very important when you're doing things at home that you're doing these very simple athletic skills that are so essential for you when you play tennis. So the first one is stepping down. So stepping down. So anytime when you're stepping into the in, down and stepping into that neutral stance, what I call stepping down the court, that is uh, one of the contact moves that I like to teach. A transfer, where you set your feet up into a semi-open stance, and kick the leg back, so you're transferring your weight from the back foot to the front foot. A low spin, where you're spinning the hip, so you're spinning your hip, I call it a low spin, but I call it a low spin spinning of the hip. This is one that you see someone like Herber doing all the time, which is just pivoting, and you notice this pivoting is an essential part of great movement on the court. So we just saw a two foot pivot, let's have a look at a one foot pivot, where you bring that knee up, that's going to help you hit with a lot of spin. There's a closed pivot where you close off the stance, not a step down where you step down, but stepping across. A shifting movement, what I call a mobile move. So obviously I'm trying to use words that uh, really describe the athletic skill, which is more of a shifting to the side. Sit down on the forehand and the boat. A reverse spin where you're moving back this sort of movement enables you to hit heavy and all it really depends on you know where you kick this leg and where that foot turns is going to decide what move that you're going to do this is power move where you're lunging at the ball so anything where you're kind of lunging 
in an elevated fashion to the side, what I call a power move. And there's hopping as well. So they're the key kind of athletic skills that I really want to try and get you to look at. And I suppose through this presentation, to do, do what I call a biased eye, where you're looking um, and, and looking at some of these athletic skills that, that are so essential to great movement on the court. So, I mean, boxing is such a, you know, it is such a great way to get fit for tennis. And one of the great things that people do uh, is skipping. And I love skipping because it really gets you nice and, um, you know, light on your feet. Why I wanted to put the skipping in today was because it's something that you can do um, in, inside any spaces, something that's fantastic to get you light on your feet and to really um, work on your cardio conditioning as well. So, of course, there's lots and lots of different skipping moves, but I just wanted to show you the ones that I kind of like for tennis and tell you why. Um, so let's start off with that. I'm just going to speak you through it. So like I said, a lot of boxers love to skip, and you can always just start off with a double skip. I always think that's a really good way to get yourself going and warmed up before you move, just bouncing on the two feet. And the most classic boxing skip that you can do is just kicking the feet forward, flipping the feet, the feet forward as well, going one, two, one, two to get you light on the feet, and then the sit up. To me, they're the classic boxing, boxing moves that boxers would use. And I think it's particularly good just to get you light on the feet. So I think that's a good way just to try and get those four uh, you know, skipping moves happening. Now, if you saw Nadal, I might just go back on that one. If you see Nadal, when he warms up, he does what I call, I'm gonna show you, he does what we call ready steps, where he flicks the feet to the side. And you notice we're putting a split step in there. So I love this movement as well, where you're flicking your feet to the side. The other one is where you're pushing off one foot and splitting in the middle, what I call lateral pushes. Of course, tennis is a power sport, you know, so you know, when you need to go back and hit scissor kick smashes or to get more drive into your serve, I think anything where you're just doing um, really explosive movements like this is important. One little fact about Nadal, 43% of the time he actually hits off one leg. So anytime you're doing skipping on one leg is really good. So jumping on one leg is really good as well. And one other thing that I really like to work on agility for tennis is to paint the alphabet. So that's another little great way to work on your, your fitness and your footwork is to do an A, do a B, do a C, do a D, do an E and work your way right down the alphabet like I was doing here. So here I've done an A, a B and a C. So I think I do a C shape here. And then of course, high knees just to work on that speed as well. So that's one way. So the boxing skips, the one leg, the, the lightness with the feet with the split steps. But of course, you know, the split step is such an intricate, intricate part of tennis. So if you can throw in some skipping with a split step, that's even more tennis specific than that, than what I showed you. And what I kind of wanted to do today, notice all this stuff you're gonna be able to do on the spot is to just take you through more and more tennis specific footwork drills that you can do in a very tight space. So this would be the next progression where we're working on skipping, but we're throwing in a split step. So here we go. So just twisting, throw in a split step. Bouncing, throw in a split step. Ready steps, which I just showed, throw in a split step. One, two, one, two, throw in the split step. Toes down, throw in the split step. Toes up, throw in the split steps. Kicking, split step, and lateral pushes where you put the split in the middle, even side to side. And then forward and back with the splits, throwing in those split steps. So really wanted to emphasize how important I think it is for skipping and how fantastic that is for you to do on the spot. Um, but the next thing I wanted to work on is I've called this no washouts ever is just, this is what used to happen. You know, this is what happens. You go down to the court and you get washed out and you can't get back on the court. But if you've got a space, then there's no reason you can't doing shadow tennis. So 
whenever someone came to me and I was speeding balls and we work on their footwork on the court and Evra got washed out, we would go undercover and uh, just straight away just do the shadow tennis. So if you've got some of these routines that you can do when it's wet as well, it's just as good as doing it at home. So I just wanted to show you a little girl, actually this girl was number, ended up being number one in Australia, Mika, just doing a little bit of shadow tennis, um, just, just using a little reference point. I would call out the different moves, working on the different shadows, going inside out, front foot hop, going back, just really working on those different types of footwork. <laughs> so um, another thing I really, I've got a tennis stance for Abby and Eva, uh, Emma. I had this um, a little story about this Emma. She was, uh, Emma Doyle is one of the, she's an Australian coach. She's and, on um, next week, she'll be on next week. Yes, well, there you go, Emma Doyle. She's a very good friend of mine. Emma's coming on, yeah. And um, Abby, they did a tennis dance for me. They really used to follow me and they put a tennis dance on for me as a, as a, as a thank you for all the work that I've done for them. And this was me um, giving them um, a payback and saying, you know what, because you put on a tennis dance, I'm going to put on a tennis dance for you. So I thought what I'd do now is just take you through what I call the golden 12 moves of tennis. I'm going to go through really slowly from the most offensive to the most attacking and just see that I'm doing this in a very tight space. I'm not having to do the power moves, which is more of a defensive move out, you know, um, you know, out, out near the sidelines. I'm just going to do all these moves in a very, very tight space. I know everyone's going to get a copy of this. Um, and over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to post a lot more of these moves so people can learn them. But one thing that I do want to say about footwork, it's really, really important that you have a name for it. I have a name for every move and I try and do a name for the move that you're doing that, that describes the, the, you know, the, the athletic skill that you're doing. So I thought I'd just show you this now, which is I'm going to start off with the most offensive, which I'm going to talk about now. Here, here's me thanking Emma and my tennis dance for her. Um, I actually had, I like the way you move on this because I always feel like if you're doing some shadow tennis, if you've got some music which can motivate you as well, that's also a great thing as well. So whenever I do shadow tennis, I always either, either have the music on or have my headphones on with some really motivating music to give you rhythm and keep you motivated. So here we go back. I do a back foot hop. So I hop off the back foot, doing some ready steps that we just showed you with the skipping rope, a reverse spin where I kind of kick that leg to the front and that foot turns to the, this is more of a defensive move where you move back off the baseline. A shadow of the power move where you're lunging out to that wide ball. We just saw that before. A mogul where you're kind of shifting to the side. So here's some different skills that we've seen already. We've seen a hop, we've seen a spin, we've seen a power move which is lunging, we've seen a mogul where we're shifting to the side. Two foot pivot, where we pivot on two foot, that makes sense. We call it a, a two foot pivot, so we're pivoting on one foot. Now we go back to the one foot, one foot pivot. Lateral hop, which is a great move to hit uh, an angle and a heavy ball cross court. Like you'll see Andy Murray and, and um, Djokovic using that move all the time. In fact, if I go back to the lateral hop, just a little bit of trivia, this is actually the most common move in the men's game. Um, I've done a lot of uh, frequency studies. I looked at 18,000 shots, and I, you know, in the men's game and the women's game, charting how often these moves are used. And this move here, the lateral hop, was the most common move used in the in the men's game. Closed backhand, where you step across, you could slice that. You could hit that as an angle. You could hit it down the line. A low spin, where you're spinning your hip. Okay. A step down, a really common move. I like to bring the legs through and cross back in front so I hit it down the line. I run around transfer where I'm kind of getting around. So there's a step down, loading that transfer and kicking that leg back for balance. So here's the thing with the footwork. For every move, there's a relevant balance move. So it's really important to know where does a leg kick, what athletic skill am I using, and even what swing line matches. So I'm matching my upper body to my lower body, so what I call a transfer. And last, Roger Federer, famous front foot hop where he comes in. A volley, a volley, and then a scissor kick smash to finish. 
So there's a really good example of just practicing your footwork with a whole variety of different contact moves in a very small space, really works on your agility, really works on your, your balance and your, you know, your body coordination. That was my thank you to Emma. Okay, so now we're gonna look at another way where we're actually gonna take some of those contact moves and put it more into a reaction type of scenario. And here we've got um, an Australian girl, Monique Adamsack, who's currently ranked, you, you'd know Monique well, right, Conrad? Yeah, I know Monique very well, Dave. I mean, what an incredible story. She was top 50 or 60 single hand backhand back in the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, she took a break, had a couple of knee injuries, came back, thought she wasn't going to come back, did a lot of your footwork, came back. She's inside top 50 in the doubles right now. Yeah, it's a fantastic Incredible story. story. And you know what? The funny thing is, she was my very first client. Wow. When wow. I started to go back and do... So I worked with her when she was uh, eight years old, and now I think something like 30 years later, she's in her you know mid-30s, 30 years later, here she is coming meeting me over in Florida, staying at my house and uh, working on some reaction drills. So you would see here, Monique's holding this reaction ball, which is, uh, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's got these different nodules on it and it bounces off in different directions. So I think this is amazing uh, for a warm up. And Monique actually did this. We, she said, oh, can you help me design a warm up? This is just before the Miami Open, before it moved up, you know, Peter Skane, before it moved up to, um, up, up to the Hard Rock Cafe in Miami. Um, so she said, can you design a, a reaction drill for me so I can really get my feet moving before I go out and play my doubles? So she, uh, we designed this together, so I thought I'd show it to you. So what she's doing is she's, she's split-stepping when it lands and depending on where she catches it, immediately she's just going to work on whatever comes to her. Here she's just working on, because she's a doubles player, so she really wanted to work on her movement into the net so we designed this for her now we want to work on her ground strokes so she's going to throw the ball she's going to catch it obviously if it goes to the forehand side she hits a forehand if it goes to the body she'll run around if it goes to a backhand she'll hit a backhand but this time she's going to have a central recovery so she's going to throw it she splits there's a step down there's a power move there's a power move again stepping in Stepping in again, transferring, and hitting a transfer again. Funny, when she does this, I haven't got the, the music, the, the sound up today, but when she was doing them, she was calling out the moves as she did them, um, which is kind of cool. So having this language is, is really, really crucial for you to even think about the moves. I always think if you're thinking about the move, and I think, oh, front foot hop, and I, I know the name of the moves. When I see the ball, I say to myself, front foot hop, hop and off I go. So... I think having a name and a language is crucial um, for you know, not only to you know, be able to understand the moves, but also to even look at the moves, Conrad. I think once they, they know these moves, they'll never look at tennis the same way again. You know, once you know these contact moves, you'll be looking for the hops, you'll be looking for the power moves. And the best way for all the listeners for you to understand them is to get out and have a go and feel them. So Dave, can I ask you just a quick question yes. uh, if I might? I've been fortunate to see these videos, obviously. Monique is one of the most professional and intense tennis players. You know, she's been around a long time. But she's having an absolute ball doing this. She's smiling. She's laughing. She's having – it's almost like you've found a way to make footwork really fun. For, this is the highest level player. A moment ago, we had a little probably 8- or 10-year-old girl in the yeah. Wet Weather program. So – I mean, has that been deliberate to try to make this a fun way for players to improve their coordination, um, their situations, but also their tennis IQ? Because you're definitely working on tennis into intellect here as well. Well, I mean, I think, you know, as a fitness trainer, my number one goal was to make them love fitness. So I have never really punished anyone with fitness. And I'm not a, a fan of you know, using fitness as a punishment. You know, okay, you guys, you know, did the wrong thing you've all got to do line sprints or whatever i think the thing for fitness my biggest job is to make them love fitness and and the more that you can do it in fun environments get off the court get down to the beach get into the sand you know put on some good music to motivate you 
Um, you know, that's the biggest take home message about fitness is to see something that you want to do. Because if you're doing fitness because you have to do it, then you've got the total wrong mindset. I don't actually understand why people wouldn't love to do fitness because there's no ins and outs, Con Conrad. You know, there's no hitting the ball in the net or hitting the back fence or there's no pressure on you when you do fitness. So, I mean, I think that's what's, and it's so crucial because to me, the single most important thing to be successful in tennis is to stay injury free. And fitness is that way that you stay injury free and um, you get a long, long career. And I know that that's a reason why Roger has got so many records is because say he stayed injury free for so long. And if the only reason that Nadal's not going to, uh, you know, surpass Roger's um, record is because he's had too many injuries. So, you know, I would say, look, fitness is something that has to be fun. It has to be something that you look forward to. It's not, and, and that's, you know, my biggest goal in fitness is to make it fun and, and to make them love it. It's really, really important. So, yeah, Mike, we, we have a great question from, uh, from one of the listeners. He wants, he or she wants to know, how has footwork evolved in the last five years? And if you see any footwork tech, technique trends that are emerging, if, you know, you know, obviously tennis technology changes rackets and all that, if, I guess if there's been anything in terms of movement and footwork um, that you can speak yeah, of. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the big one that the people see with Djokovic, you know, lately is, you know, how he slides out and hits what I call that fixed stance wrist manipulation. But, you know, I think it has evolved. But what I think is really important is, is, you know, the great players, the Roger Federer's, the Nadal, the Djokovic, they all have their own signature moves that they really do. And that, that, that kind of transcends the game and moves the game to a next level. And I feel that's why they're the greatest of all time, because they do have these footwork or contact moves that work really, really well for them. And that they use to, um, you know, I, I think, you know, really sort of it's it's like a Roger Federer front foot hop or an Nadal you know high spinner like it really really makes them what they are is how well and how how great they are at certain different contact moves and yes the game has become a lot more faster and so you know we were talking about this before Conrad I think defense has become much more of an issue um, but you you know in in the modern game so I think you know we're all talking about attacking the net and you know but tennis is a 360 degree sport and my answer to that question is yeah tennis is a 360 degree sport and you know players need to be able to move in all directions super super well and that's what i'm seeing everyone now is really moving well in all all directions so i'm just going to show monique again with this return now with this reaction where now she's working on her returns and going back and hitting it hitting it yeah, so that was a lot of fun working with her. So another thing that I, I wanted to show today is going back through the, um, I am a big fan of, of ladder drills, but I'm also a bigger fan of just having four ladders for each individual person. So if I have a group um, of, of people doing footwork, I like everyone to have their own ladder because I think if you're moving through a ladder and you say disturb the ladder, then the whole drill stops because everyone's got to fix the ladder. So um, I'm, I'm a big fan of using the ladders and I just wanted to show you how you can use the ladder to do those 12 golden contact moves that I showed before. I'm not going to speak too much. I'm just going to show you how you can use this, this ladder and then a few little teaching points also on how to get faster as we go through the ladder. So it's going to be very similar to that shadow tennis that I showed you before. So this is a young... Florida girl, I think she's like number three in Florida, knows the footwork very well. I'm actually calling out the moves and she goes to the color that I call out. So we're going to see. So there's your back foot hop in the yellow, a reverse spin that we saw before, running through the ladder, hitting a move. So a lot of people, you know, run through ladders, high knees, butt kicks, you know, jumping. But I really want you guys to start to be a bit more creative and see so you can actually run through a ladder and hit tennis shots. Here's that power move where we're lunging before. The two foot pivot where you pivot on two feet. The one foot pivot using the ladder. Notice using the ladder, that lateral hop that I showed you before where you're hopping to the side. Close back in. So I'm really, I'm a really big fan of having templates having things that can keep you, you know, your coordination for your feet 
but um, also to challenge you in all the different contact moves, but using the different squares. So I'll just keep going. Now, just wanted to show you that again, because I know a lot of people have problems, um, you know, doing that crossover step. So I wanted to go through that again here, where we step in, using the ladder as a guide, have a look how she brings her leg through and drops that foot back out of, out of the ladder and then crosses back. So, you know, if you wanted to learn, you know, that crossover step, I don't think there's a better drill than just using a ladder. Well, we'll see it again, where you step in, bring leg, drop that foot back to work on your crossover step. I have found just using a square like this, a fantastic way for you to learn your crossover step. So I just sort of throw that one in because it's a really good little teaching thing that I found worked really well when I was teaching that. The... Okay, here's a low spin where you're spinning your hips, going through using the ladder. Run around transfer. Notice here it's much more of a, a snap than a jump and she's landing in the square. And that front foot hop again. So, you know, there's a, okay, it's a little bit more complex than just doing your shadow tennis just on the, on the spot. But I really um, thought that's look a, 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 a little bit more challenging way that you can challenge your footwork and your, your moves by trying to do these 12 contact moves um, you know, in a ladder. I thought I'd show you this one too, which is another way that you can take the moves, which is this, uh, I'm not sure I should, should I play this one, Conrad? Maybe put the sound on this one and people can watch it. It's kind of fun. Play it through, play it through. Yeah, this one's brilliant. Okay, so I might put a little bit of um, music on it uh, and let's just hear this. Hey Dave, is that in Boca? Is this one? Sorry? Is this one in, in Boca, Florida? Is that where this one takes place? This is where I actually uh, train out of, which is near a Lago, a beautiful tennis center. So, oh, gotcha. You know, it looks like one I used to play in. And so this boy, just a little turn, AJ was his name. He came in, he flew in from um, California, um, fantastic kid, um, came in for my little four-day, uh, you know, flying clinic. And um, it's funny because we got washed out and, um, and we had to find some things to do. The courts were too wet, but it wasn't too wet on the path. So this is what we came up, up, up with. I'll just play it so you can hear. It's kind of fun. You may as well practice your footwork on the way to pick up your lunch. Okay, come on, let's go. Front foot hop. Start with the front foot hop. Not loaded, transfer. Run around. Really kick the leg. Then it's okay, a low spin. Go across this. Really spin there. That's a great low spin. And that lateral hop. Forehand. Bring that knee up. Oh, I like it. Keep going. Turn those toes. Turn it. Well, I love that knee drop. Okay, one foot given. You're going to go down the line. Really lift that knee. Keep going. Okay, let's get a bit of a I didn't want him to go into the garden, but anyway, he was, he was a funny kid. Anyway, let's keep going. You know, again, I'll just go to the next one. I think, Dave, um, just while, while I got yeah. you there, before you move into it, what I love is the creativity. I mean, you've got to think outside of the box. That is yeah. one of the biggest takeaways I get every time I'm, I'm watching some of your stuff or working with you. It's how creative you are. You're finding pathways. Mm -hmm. You're finding, you know, a, a space, a room, a backyard, a balcony. Um, little areas can be very effective. I know you, you worked with one of my Japanese pro players a while back um, who was just fascinated with how little equipment she needed. And I think that's something that's really important uh, here in today's situation as well. Yeah, and I, I, you're right. And, you know, like we, we, we did that along a path there. But, you know, I know people might, you know, be in a situation, well, you know, I, I'm staying at the house. You could do it around my, my house at the moment, you know, just... Uh, you know, just around that house or up and down the driveway or, you know, everyone's probably got a park out the front of their house. A lot of people have. So, you know, even if you're doing it up and down the path out the front of your house, yes, you have to be creative. But, you know, this is one thing that you can keep up. You know, and I know it's going to be hard over the next couple of days for people to hit tennis balls, right? It's going to be impossible for the next couple of weeks. But that's not stopping you practicing your footwork 
and practicing and, and, and practicing doing your fitness and doing everything because you know that's my biggest concern is people are isolated and people are going to lose a lot of fitness and you know it's boring you've got to get out there and, and do something to keep your mind active and this is what I'm trying to do today is not make this a, a presentation about all the moves but how to be creative so I wanted to move on to this one which is a similar thing we just saw ground strokes I wanted to show you just doing some different approach shots that you can do it's a funny story um I was, uh, you know, I was, I've always been into fitness. And one thing that I did one year, we have the city to surf, as you know, Conrad. Um, you know, one year I, I piggybacked someone. Another, another year I ran up Center Point Tower. One year I actually did footwork with the 14 kilometer run, as you know, and I did footwork the whole way. We dressed up as Andre Agassi and we did shadow tennis the whole way. And I'm telling you, doing that shadow tennis was harder than running up the steepest you know, the, 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 the most stairs in Sydney. It was harder than feedbacking. So I'm telling you, shadow tennis is a fantastic way to um, get fit. And this is kind of what we did for the 14 kilometers. We just dressed up as Andre Agassi and off we went. We just hit all these different shots in and out of the crowd. I think there were six of us. We got to the finish line and we did six kick smashes in front of the crowd watching. And, and that was the sort of thing that we did. So you know, working on your approach shots, particularly where you're moving down a path. So I want to show you this. These are some cool approach shots. So the front foot hop, moving, front foot hop on the backhand, a little replacement, more of a one-handed move, a traveling transfer where you travel through it, karaoke where the foot comes in behind, a lateral hop where you hop off your back foot, your side foot, I should say, close pivot, full step down, all just different types of ideas to give you on how to approach and kind of, you know, you can even take these and find out which ones works for you. That's a big thing about footwork is that, you know, everyone has to keep experimenting and use whatever works for you. But look, that's great aerobic. You can do that around a park. You can do that, you know, around your house, like I said, up and down your driveway, working on your different approach shots. So, Here's another sort of thing that I think is also great for the moves is to um, actually throw the ball against a wall. So if you've got a garage wall, why not get a red ball out and just practice some of this footwork, throwing it against the wall and catching the rebound. So I just wanted to show you that. I'm trying to do, I think all 12 moves in under 20 seconds. So just throw it against the wall, don't need a racket. There's a reverse spin again, the power move, the mobile, just working on my footwork, working on my reactions, really good for you. Just work on those different moves, still kind of shadowing, but actually throwing a ball, which is actually more coordinated. Every drill that I'm showing you is a little bit more coordinated. But again, there's another way to take the moves and throw a ball against a wall and work on those moves. So, you know, another thing about these moves is, is Conrad, it's to use a medicine ball. All these moves are perfect. If you've got a medicine ball and you can throw a medicine ball into one of those rebounders or throw it against a wall, instead of doing chest passes or throw-ins or, you know, granny tosses, throw the medicine ball against the wall using the correct footwork, using the correct contact moves. Hey, so, Bob Perkins had a question about, he wants to know if you swing the racket while doing the footwork drills. Like, you know, if it, you know, I guess, I guess sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but... Uh... But, you know, when, when would you swing? When would you not swing, you know, I guess? Right. Yeah, so I think, you know, you, I mean, you can do all of this. Sometimes, you know, if you're inside, you can use a racket. I mean, you can use a racket if you want. You can choke the racket up. You can do it with your hand. You can do it with a grip, depending on how much space you have. So don't think that you have to swing a racket to keep practicing some of these moves. I think it's, it's really important just to, you know, practice these moves and you can do them anywhere. Practice your footwork just with your hand inside because, yeah, you don't want to break mum's chandelier. But, you know, um, but, yeah, very, you just, you can do it with a racket, you can do it with a grip, you can do it with a ball, you can do it with a medicine ball. There's all different very ways, various ways. I just want everyone to see if they can learn these 12 moves. I think it will make a big difference to their, you know, what they're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. And um, I, I think... You know, Condra, I, I said to you, you know, over the next uh, 12 days, I'm going to be um, putting four different moves a day, um, 12 lessons, just so people can, from, you know, the most difficult to the most complex, a couple of different levels, like there's going to be a red level, which I suppose is more like red ball level. There's going to be a, 
uh, an orange level, move on to the green level, move on to the yellow level. But that's saying that the yellow level would still start at the red level. It's just that more simple all the way to the most complex. So I really want to you know, thank people for coming in today and for me to try and help you over these next couple of weeks to learn some of these moves. So that's going to be one of my jobs is to, to get online and help you guys learn some of these moves and um, break it down because I know it's a lot of information to take in at the moment. So I just want you guys to know that I'm going to break it down very, very simply over the next, you know, 12, 12, 12 days. So. <laughs> Somebody, great, great question. Somebody wants to know how it, uh, um, Mustafa wants to know how you teach Djokovic slide, or I guess anybody slide on clay courts. Is there a way to teach the, the slide, yeah, I mean, the hard court slide, Djokovic I slide? That, I think that's something that, you know, you've got to be a little bit careful with because I think, you know, obviously he can do the splits. He's very flexible. He also, you know, um, I, I think this is true. He actually has his shoes sort of, um, uh, you know, has all the tread taken off his shoes. So he can do that move. So, you, you know, you can do it. If I was saying practice it, I would definitely say practice it, you know, on the clay or practice it on right. the beach first. I mean, I think, you know, getting on the hard court, doing that straight away. Some kids I have do it and it happens very, very naturally. And it just sort of happens, you know, in the way that they move. But my, my experience is it really is more the kids that are really, really fast on the court. You know, kids that have that natural speed and it kind of happens naturally. I wouldn't sort of go out there and, and teach it to someone unless you feel it, it's something that just happens naturally on the court with, you know, when they, when they, because there is that, you know, it's like sliding on clay courts. You know, you've got to be really, really careful. It's all about confidence. So I think it's something that you've got to make sure that the kid's confident to do it before going in to do that. And I know we all like to emulate our heroes. But, um, you know, Djokovic is, you know, uh, he, he, he's a freak and he's one in a million. And, and I think that's, again, one of his signature moves that I talked about before. So I wanted to move on to this, because this is an important thing, Conrad, that we talked about, where you can see this card that, that Rika is, has got on her racket. Um, of course, I don't remember, I, I don't expect everyone to remember the move. So um, I am going to email everyone here today this, uh, this, sheet that has these cards on it. I've laminated this card, I've punched some holes in it, and I've put some elastic bands through here. So it's attached to the racket, and they do eight sets of each move. So she's doing here a loaded transfer. She'll do eight of them. So let's just keep watching. She's loading, she's kicking that leg back. And she's got the card there. You can, hopefully you can see that. I think we freeze it. Cue card is attached to the racket. Um, because I've also got these in, in order of the simplest to the most complex. And what she does is she does her eight moves. And then she rests and she, she walks around this cone and she reads the card on what the next move is. So all you, need, I mean, you don't even have to walk that far, but you've got your little reference point. You're doing your shadow tennis. You walk around the disc read off the card what you're going to do next and then off you go so um yeah laminate it put the um the the rubber band around it and this is um something even once you get it, you can even start to you know as a parent you might be calling out these different moves and the kids can do all these different moves off these cue cards and remember the names really match what you do athletically so two foot pivot you pivot on two foot Front foot hop, you hop off your front foot. Transfer, you transfer your weight. So hopefully the words really make sense on you know what we're trying to do. And I know you know Conrad, you know Rika. She, she, I think she got very well. Yeah, I know Rika very, very well. I mean, uh, if I go back to early 2000s, I lived in Japan, and she was a up and coming superstar then. And towards the end of her career, she only retired a couple of weeks ago. But towards the yeah. end of her career. Um, she really played a great role with a lot of the younger Japanese yeah. players. And actually, in the background is one of my players right there. No, exactly. Isn't that um, funny? That's a small Rika, We're at a tournament, um, and I actually asked uh, Rika, what do you come and watch Nozomi with me, and what do you think? And she said the key thing here is her footwork. Yeah. Uh, that's how Nozomi found her way to you, which is great. And this is what this was, Connor. This was actually, you, you would have known about it. It was like a, a four-day, a, a, week, a yep. week footwork camp. And this yep. was near the end where I've taught them all the moves and they're just putting this together. We had the music going and um, this was like the grand finale, putting all the moves together and they all read off the, 
read off the, the cue card and, and went from there. So yeah, I mean, this is the little thing that I would like to give to everyone. And uh, I'd also like to give as a gift um, uh, a chart, which is gonna have all these moves on it with pictures. So you can take it out with you to remind you on what, what move is what. So I really wanna try and help people as much as I can. So let's just move on. So this is one thing, Conrad, that I do, um, where I have this product, which is on my website. And when I have flying clinics, I get people to um, study this before they come on. Um, and th what this is, all the moves where you can shadow it off the screen, where you can shadow it off your, you know, your mobile phone, you can shadow it off your TV. So I just wanted to show, you know, all the listeners, um, this great resource that I use all the time. You're going to see here, um, I'll put this on a sheet on the back of a, a, a court, to turn the lights off. Um, my record actually is 80 kids doing this at once off the screen oh. at Fimble Ladies Colleges with Monique. Monique was one of them when she was a young girl. So here, just using the screen, using these different dots as templates to help you practice the, the, the footwork. So transferring off the screen running around, obviously I'm telling you what to do, load, kick, recover back. So you can practice your footwork at home um, off all these different, um, yeah, just using, using, using the screen as a guide and reacting off the screen to practice all those different 12 contact moves. Goes for about 30, 30 something minutes. So it's a continuous 30 minute workout. Dave, um, I want to ask you while we're there doing this, I mean, again, as we highlighted before, this falls under the fitness uh, or conditioning umbrella. Yeah. But there are so many young players out there or maybe even parents who don't give enough value to the conditioning time. Uh, they value the ball hitting, the ball striking, um, the two hours on court or an hour, 90 minutes, whatever it might be but not enough value to the time that's needed to do this. So um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, in Australia, we don't have a lot of indoor courts. So wet weather means wet weather and we've got to be creative and do these yeah. things. It just seems there are some places where the culture is not yet developed of how important it is to do this stuff in the rain or, you know, not being able to get on court. It's actually an opportunity to work on coordination. Footwork. Yeah, exactly. I mean, thoughts? that's why you've got to give you know, fitness, the respect that it deserves, because that's what you're going to do when you get washed out. And you've got to be creative because for the, the senior players that are listening to this, these are ones that go on the road. You're not going to, you know, especially, okay, at the elite level, you're going to probably have a nice gym that you're going to work out on. But most of the time when you're out on the, and, and you're having to travel the world and find places to do, you know, your fitness in parks, off benches, in, you know, hotel rooms, sometimes it's not even safe to go out and do, you know, your workouts outside. So, you know, fitness is such an important part. And like I said, it's, it's, I remember like a, a good way to explain it was, you know, uh, you would have heard of that, that famous uh, South African girl, Amanda Kutzer, who was yeah. probably the smallest girl in the history of tennis. And she said, you know, I train so I can take fitness, take the fitness element out of the equation. So she got so fit that she knew she wasn't going to lose a match because she got tired. And I think that's a big reason why you don't, you need to work on your fitness because, you know, okay, the opponent's too good. If they was, uh, you know, they, you, you lost because their, their forehand was too big or their serve was too big. Okay, you shake hands and say too good. But isn't it a tragedy if you lose the match because you got tired? You were winning the match, but you got tired and then suddenly, you know, what you've got to understand about fitness is that once you start to get tired, your ability to play dramatically drops. And the other thing is too, if you're not fit and you suddenly win your match and then you move on to the next match, but you're stiff and lactic and tired for the next match, you know, that could have a huge bearing on your ability to win the tournament. So, you know, it's not about just being fit. It's not about just injury free, but it's being able to win a tournament because you're fit. And I know like Nick Kyrgios, when he played that match in the Australian Open, he was so sore and so stiff, there was no chance he was gonna beat Nadal in that next round, just because he couldn't recover and this is why, you know, the Djokovic's and the Nadal's and the Federer's are so far about everyone because their conditioning is so supreme that they can last the whole Grand Slam tournament, you know? So um, that's what that's I... That's a really good point, Dave. I think a lot of people train to win a match, 
But winning a tournament and winning a match are two completely separate skills. Absolutely. Also, winning tournament after tournament. I mean, winning one after the next and then playing the next week, you know, when, when they're in the grind. Exactly. You know, and, and you know, being able to get through. And well, what happens is kids improve and they get better and better. And suddenly, you know, their, their, their shoulders start to hurt because they're not used to playing so many matches. Or they start to, you know, get injuries because they're not conditioned enough to handle that when they actually are getting better and better and, you know, progressing through the tournament. So, you know, like you said before, Conrad, you can't control your opponent, but your fitness is something you can control. And what I was talking about before, there's no ins and outs. There's no reason why you shouldn't do fitness. You know, and also, not only that, it makes you feel good about yourself. It makes you look good. You know, life is image. And uh, it's so important to get out there and work on your fitness. So um, I just wanted to just do one fun thing for everyone. Um, one thing that I was very proud of, I actually put this together. It's what I call a tennis dance. And I put this together because one day my dream is to train all these players up on in, in footwork and to walk out onto the centre court of the Australian Open or the US Open and do a tennis dance and promote tennis through footwork and movement. So this was actually a promotional video that we took to Tennis Australia to see if they could, um, uh, and, and obviously they rejected, which, 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 which was sad. But I put this together with my dream one day of having a whole bunch of kids running out to the centre court at the US Open and doing an amazing dance and entertaining the crowd instead of hitting those red balls over the net, which is good. But wouldn't it be cool if we could have a tennis dance where everyone's just, you know, showing what's so fabulous about our, our wonderful game. So I'm going to play this and then we might go to some questions and answers if we've got time. Tennis is a dance and the ball is your partner. Dave, that's uh, absolutely uh, unbelievable stuff. I mean, what I love the most, if I can highlight, and again, I've, we've worked together many years and I've known you and many players you've worked with, is that you've found a way to make footwork really specific and very early to, to easy to learn. And I think the other thing is you've made it very visual, not only with the words and the language that you're using to describe the moves, but with the way that you teach it. So that is something maybe you can just highlight very quickly to us before Ari goes to questions. The actual process of learning these moves from start to end um, and becoming proficient what time frame would that be? How often do you think players should be doing this stuff? Go for it, Dave. 
Well, I mean, it's, it's funny because, you know, I know a lot of these kids that you work, especially in the high performance. Um, I, I actually got this whole concept from a Grand Slam champion, Mary Pierce. I was at Volateris. I was working there at Volateris. And she said, for one hour a day, I just want to think about my footwork. And I just went from there. You know, one hour a day, when I go on the court, I'm just thinking about the footwork. So I think, you know, it's really, really important to, when you go out and hit the ball, that you give footwork the respect that it deserves. And I say that again, give footwork the respect that it deserves and go out and think about your split step. Go out and think about your recovery steps. Go out and think about reading the ball and what move you're going to do on what, 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 what. And, you know, I know there's 12 moves that you saw there, but just do one a week. Just learn one a week. Uh, it's not something that we put them all together, you know, in, in one week. Um, and then once, you know, once you've got those six athletic skills, so my biggest advice is this, work on those six athletic skills. Learn how to pivot, learn how to hop, learn how to transfer, learn how to spin the hips, learn how to hit that elevated lunge, that power move, which we saw out wide, and the mogul where you shift to the side. There is six athletic skills. And when you've got those six athletic skills, you can turn them into approach shots. You can turn them into uh, volleys. You can turn them into return asserts. So it then goes from there. So my advice is try and really understand and respect those six athletic skills. Try and incorporate that in. Don't rush it. And then I, I know your game will go to, a next, to the next level because it's a movement game. I have so many people fly into me and they fly into me because they're told that their footwork's so bad that they can't move and I have to come and fix them. But that's what they've got in their head. They've got in their head that they can't move well. When I convince them they can move well and they, they, can, they can be great athletes, you should see the difference they, they get from moving on the court because they believe in themselves. So, you know, you've got to turn footwork into something that's fun and something that you see as super, super important because as you said, Roger Federer said, my game is all about footwork. When I move well, I play well. And that is my promise that if you move well, you will play so, so much better. In, in hey, the game. Can, you, um, can you talk a little bit about a good routine to get into, whether it's three days a week, four days a week, five days a week, you know, for a half an hour, 40 minutes, you know, everybody has kind of their routine, whether it's cardio routine or, you know, if, if, if I want to get a good routine together, what's, what's, what's the best ingredients in your mind? Well, I think, you know, what I think a good thing to do is, you know, even if you just start to work on, obviously you get your ladders out, you can get your skipping out, you can do your sides, get your, your crossovers, all that fundamental stuff, which is so, so important. But I think, you know, what I'm going to try and help everyone with is, you know, four moves, um, you know, just four moves over 12 different lessons. And if they can just, you know, do each move, say, eight times, so that's, you know, learn the move, do it slowly, do it eight times. That's only like 10 minutes a day to work on your footwork. You know, we all do, um, you know, high knees and butt kicks and skipping ropes and side skips and run around the court to warm up. Doesn't it make more sense to warm up actually with shadow tennis because it's more specific. So once you've learned these shadow tennis routines, whenever I do a footwork squad, I always try and warm up with, I don't even call it the warm up, I call it the theory. So, you know, try and do some of your shadow tennis to get you warm, um, you know, before you go out and play. That's probably the best time to do it is before you go out and play. Now, I know it's not that environment at the moment, but geez, if everyone can just, you know, learn these four moves in lesson one and then learn them and then put the next one in and then the next one, and you're going to end up having 42 different moves. Now, the red ball level is probably more for the red ball as I get it. And then, you know, we've got the yellow level, we've got the green level, sorry, we've got the, the orange level, we've got the green level and, and the, the, the yellow level. But that still doesn't, you know, stop them from, you know, trying to attempt all these different moves. You never know, you might surprise yourself. But my advice would be, yeah, get out there. Try, look, in these troubled times, the more that you can get out there and, and, and get fit and, and oxygenate your body and keep your mind active. And the other thing is too, watch a lot of videos. I have this encyclopedia of modern tennis you guys, after this presentation, go and watch the footwork. Watch the footwork on TV, and you'll see all these moves, and that'll motivate you as well. I have, uh, yeah. A quick question for you. Um, this is obviously part of our webinar series, which falls into the Centre Court um, 360 uh, education concept, which is a holistic concept where we're trying to get athletes to become, um, you know, equally 
as prestigious in their uh, um, academics as well. The other the thing that I, I really think is very important here, and it's been asked a few times, you've found a way and you've coordinated tennis movement. It's a little bit similar to um, some of the karate martial arts yes. type of moves. Um, you know, that type of coordination, how important is that in the sport of tennis? Coordination. I know Spanish methodology is very much about coordination. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, it's called footwork for a reason. You know, that's one of my favorite quotes is remember it's footwork, not, not footwalk. You know, so I think, you know, it's so important to get out there. And, um, you know, I, I think the big thing is people don't really practice footwork enough. You know, so if you get out there and you practice your footwork and, and, and you become much more coordinated and you know where your feet are in space, I like to say, it's going to give you an advantage because most kids don't practice their footwork. You know, so this is kind of like a little secret thing where you can go out and do your shadow tennis and understand the different moves and kind of understand how that relates to the different balls that keep coming at you. So to me, you know, these people come to me because they want an edge and they know if they do some footwork training and they get taught, you know, all these different moves and they understand them, that, that's going to give them an advantage because most people don't move well. Most people you know, don't do any footwork training. So to me, it's a secret weapon, you know, and that's why the Spanish have been so successful because they've emphasized movement first over everything, you know, and it is a lower body sport. The first thing that I flashed up on the screens in this presentation was tennis is a lower body sport. And when you can start to match the lower body to the upper body, like martial arts does that you mentioned, you're going to be a much, much better player. We, look, we talk about footwork, but it's also so much about balance. And, you know, all these moves are also going to really work on your balance because you're getting your stance correct. You're kicking the leg back the right way. You're keeping your alignment of your body. You're keeping your feet nice and wide. And in the end, balance is everything. You know, it's all about balance. So we've talked about footwork, we've talked about fitness, and we've talked about balance. And I feel my method kind of puts all those three together. And, um, you know, so that's what's exciting about it. The, the last thing, I, before I go back to Ari, is we've had... Um... Craig O'Shaughnessy on talking about obviously strategy and tactics and modern trends. Um, he also stressed a lot of stuff related to technique and imagery and kind of seeing and, and, and yeah. visualizing um, and learning to play that way. We had Dr. Anthony Ross on, who's obviously a mental specialist talking a lot about, you know, how to be able to see the game and be able to coordinate your movements through the visual training. We had Jorge Capistani on who talked about tennis IQ. And a lot of what he talked about was also visual and training off the court and visual. Yeah. A lot of kids maybe don't value that enough. And, and I think I'd just like you to really stress to them how much you can actually improve just by doing these things in a mm. totally non-tennis environment, just yes. going over these routines and developing those coordinated movements, understanding the situation of short ball, wide ball, deep ball, high ball, heavy ball, tight ball, all of those different variations and how it's first about position before the strike. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I, I think what you say is very valid. And I think, you know, doing the shadow tennis is really, really um, important because, um, you know, we talk about visualization, but active visualization is even better. So if you can visualize yourself moving around the court, but do it in an active way instead of a passive way, you know, sitting in a chair, then, you know, I think that's where the shadow tennis comes in as well because you can go out and shadow it and you can be moving, you can be striking the ball, you can be visualising your shots going away for winners. You know, there's no one better than Nadal who does that. He gets in front of the mirror and he visualises himself, you know, just crushing the other person down the other end. And the more you can do that in a physical way, I think that's even more powerful than just even just sitting in a chair and trying to visualise that because you can actually feel yourself being amazing before you walk out onto the court. So. Dave, did you want me to pull up the um, the, the chart, or do we do we want to send that to? Yes, everybody? if you can pull up that chart, that let would me pull be that great, up real quick. I've been going for a long time. And then, yeah, and then we'll um, let me pull this up real quick. Can everybody see that? Can you guys see that? Are we good? Can you see that, Dave? Um, I'm just I've just lost my image. Hold yes, on. I've got it, Ari. Okay, hold on. Let's make sure that. Uh, 
Dave can view it, if not, I'll remove oh, it. Oh, yes, I can see it. Fantastic. There I am. Yes. Yes, so this, look, this is all the different 15 moves that I like to talk. It's got the, the type of ball, the type of footwork, the type of outsteps, the hitting stand. So I think it's a really nice summary of what I've talked about. It's got a little photo of each one. So, um, yeah, we've, I'm very happy for everyone to, to get this um, chart because it's a really, really nice way to kind of summarize all the different moves that I like to teach. Awesome. Um, so we'll send this out to everybody. Um, I'm going to go over, let me just uh, get out of here real yeah. quick. Um, before I let uh, Dave finish it off, um, I obviously wanted to thank everybody for joining us today. It's been, it's been you know, a pleasure having all these webinars. Um, special thanks to Dave and Karen, of course. Um, we do have some amazing guests tomorrow night. We're doing a tri tennis trivia, which is going to be fun. We're going to give prizes away, ask some fun questions. We have Gigi Fernandez on next week. Um, we are going to have Harvard coach Dave Fish talking about the UTR and its impact, Origins impact. We're going to have um, Nick Balachari on. We're going to have Emma Doyle on, and and just on and on. We're going to we're going to keep having these. Hopefully, we'll have Dave back as well. Um, and it's just been an incredible uh, you know incredible experience to have all these brilliant minds on. Um, Dave, you mentioned the challenge. Is there anything else you wanted to mention about that and, and uh, people sending videos of their, yes. of their workouts or whatever you want to finish up with? So, yeah. yeah, so what I wanted to do, I've, I've already actually filmed it. I filmed it today. So it's done. So I want to, you know, every, I'm going to post um, a footwork drill from the most simplest, you know, the pivoting and then the hopping and then the transferring, the spinning, the, the shifting and, and the power moves. So I'm going to, um, post that over the next like 12 lessons and um, then want people to select one move from each lesson, film it, send it to me and I will, uh, I will judge the top three and I'll send um, nearly $200 worth of product out to people. To, awesome. So how can they get it over to you? Do they email it? Do they, uh, do they post uh, it? They'll find, they'll find all that on, on, on the post, on the post, oh, perfect. You know, where awesome. to send it and everything. So I'll post it and uh, yeah, they can just, and I, what I'm going to do is one lesson straight after the other. So virtually, you know, you can go to my Facebook or my Instagram and you'll see them, you know, continuously back to back, you know, all the different lessons. So they Very can keep cool. forcing to them. They can keep going back to their Instagram or Facebook and keep, you know, having a look at the footwork. It's very simple. Um, and again, it's only a minute. Uh, uh, so it's very fast and, and simple. So uh, just before Ari uh, wraps it up, I want to say thank you very, very much for your time. Um, I know you're in between uh, uh, homes at the moment with the, with the virus trying to get back to Australia. So I really appreciate it. I know it was difficult. Uh, we'll do everything we can uh, to follow up with this brilliant um, webinar that you've put together. Um, next time you're in the area up uh, New York way, we'll definitely be asking you to pop in and, and uh, meet us here at the club and, and, and help some of the kids and, and club members um, to go through some of your methodology. So thanks a lot, mate. I really appreciate it. Always great to talk to an Aussie and uh, yeah, over to you, Ari. Fantastic. And I think that my last thing is, you know, if everyone wants to see, uh, you know, go to my Insta Instagram page, which is Bailey Tennis Footwork or my Facebook, or go to my website. I've got a lot of free stuff on there, a lot of essays and really good resources. And, and, and that, that shadow tennis that I showed you where they can do it off the screen, I think that's a great thing in, the, in these troubled times to be able to do something, like I said, it's a 30-something you know, continuous workout. So I think that's a great thing for people to know it, that exists. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you to Ari. It's been really nice to see you again. And hopefully I'll catch, we'll catch up soon. I'd love to come up to New York, my friend. I'd love to come up and have a good icy beer with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all the best. Bye, everyone. All right, thanks, everyone. The recording of this can be viewed on the, um, our YouTube page, Center Court Sports and Center Court Tennis Academy YouTube pages uh, with uh, – you can send it over to anybody that missed it. And um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks again. Bye, everyone.